tonight is just going to be an encouragement. It's not going to be something new or something that you haven't heard before. It's just a reminder that God is in the waiting. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is in the waiting. That neighbor is just not giving tonight. Turn to your other neighbor and say, God is in the waiting. That's good. That's good. I like that. I like that one. So... It's been an incredible journey, guys, from the beginning of this semester to today. We've learned a lot. We've learned to fix our eyes on Jesus. We've learned that God is just there and he sees us. He sees our struggles. He's with us all the step of the way. We've also gotten some healing. Am I right? Man, some deep healing, man. Every, every Tuesday, I'm just like crying. My eyes are red. I'm having a headache at the end because my life is changing and getting better every week. And it's been incredible. And then the revival broke out in Kentucky and gosh, that was incredible. And tonight, I just want to remind you guys again that God is in the waiting. God is there beside you. He sees you. He's not blind to your struggles. He's standing there. Ah, and when he shows up, <laughs> when he shows, hey, when he shows, everybody around you, your friends, your family, people that don't even know you, your social media friends, they will testify that God is a good God. Am I right? God is good. Amen. Okay. So my scripture for today is from Isaiah 30, verse 18. I think, yes, it's there. Thank you. So the Lord will wait for you to come to him so he can show you his love and compassion. For the Lord is a faithful God. Blessed are those who wait for his help. And faithfulness to me, guys, I learned something about faithfulness a few years ago. Faithfulness means a firm alignment. So, like somebody is standing beside you. No matter what you do, whether you move to the left, you move to the right, you come to America, you go to Canada, wherever you are, God is there beside you. In your struggles, in your good times, hey, in your bad times, in your sad times, God is standing there. He has never left and he will never leave you for, for no reason. And I like that he says there, blessed are those who wait for his help. And so, guys, for tonight's sermon, I broke it into kind of three structures. We have the lies that attack God's identity and attacks our identity while we wait. And then another thing I have tonight is, wait, why are we waiting? Why can't it just be like this? Ask God, um, God, can you give me $1 million? And God gives you $1 million today. Why do we wait? And then finally, my last thing is, what do we do while we wait? What do we do? Do we just sit and chill and sit in the room? What do we do? So we have those three structures tonight. Okay. And I have my big folder here. So if you see me turning, it's because of my big paper here. Okay, guys. Okay. So the first lie I have here is God has forgotten me. In this waiting, God just left me in a corner. I'm left in a cellar in an abandoned room somewhere. He doesn't care. It's fine. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm alone. Okay, cool. Cool, Lauren. Okay, fine. <laughs> and as I was getting ready for tonight, the scripture that came to my mind was Isaiah 49 from verses 14 to 16. Yet Jerusalem said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. But then... Jesus, God said, can if mother forget her nursing child and have no compassion on the child she has born, though she may forget, which guys, the probability of a mom forgetting her child is really, really low. You carry the child for nine months. The chances that you forget, is, it's low. And God said, though she may forget, I will not, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. And I want you guys to take a second. Look at the palms of your hand. Just quickly, just briefly. Look at the palms of your hand. Imagine that God, your God, the King of kings, the Lord of the lords, the Alpha and Omega, the person that created the whole universe, He's seeing you on the palms of his hands. Every day he's seeing you. He's watching after you. He's guiding you. He has, not forget, he has not forgotten you in your struggles, in this waiting period. He's with you. You're on his palms. So every time you feel like, oh, I feel like God has forgotten me, look at the palms of your hands and remember 
that he will never forget you. You are engraved on the palms of his hands. And then my own story, guys. As Kayla was talking, I was like, yeah, yeah, it's nice. I've been here for long. But in my down times, guys, I remember my dream when I was coming here. So almost every immigrant's dream is come to the U.S., you know, study well, follow the laws, and then when you're done, get a good job, right? And then slowly, like, assimilate into the culture, Canadian, American, wherever you are. And guys, 2017 to 2019, I was in school. I was good. I loved the Lord. Mm -mm. But one part of my mind, I was like, but I'm smart, though. <laughs> I'm so smart. I'm just going to, like, get a good job once I'm done. And then I'm going to just blow. In Africa, when, we, when you blow, it means, like, you've become successful. So I'm just going to blow and live the American dream. Cool. That was my whole plan. <laughs> And then 2019, I finished school. My mom came from Nigeria to celebrate. It was lit. Everything was amazing. <laughs> and then I was looking for jobs and nothing. And I said, uh, excuse, Lord, I I'm here. <laughs> and then all my friends started leaving. All the friends that we came together, like we came to the U.S. at the same time. They were going to Houston, New York, Chicago. And I'm like, uh, excuse me, Lord, do you, do you see me? Nothing. I didn't hear anything. Okay, and then 2020 came, and COVID hit, and then all the companies I was talking to, they were telling me, um, right now we have a hiring freeze, so we're not hiring right now. Focus on your CPA. And I'm like, eh, boy, I just finished school, though. Like, I need some time to rest, make some money. They were like, eh, yeah, focus on your CPA. I said, okay, cool. Started studying for the CPA. I did, they said, okay, do one exam, and then... Afterwards, we'll hire you. I did one exam. Sorry, we was still on the hiring freeze. Second exam. Sorry, we was still on the hiring freeze. Third exam. Sorry, we was still on the hiring freeze. And before I knew it, 2020 was over. And I'm like, excuse me, Lord, do you see me? Nothing. Okay, I said, okay. Then I went back to school again because I have to stay legal in the U.S. so I don't get deported. That's a whole other story. Find me later. <sighs> I went back to school, did another year in school. Excuse me, Lord, do you see me? Pfft, silence, dead silence. I'm like, okay. 2022 came, same thing. Okay, I'm still in school, God, okay, okay, let's go, let's go. Pfft, nothing. Until one day, guys, and I'll get to that later, but the silence broke my heart. And I can keep it coded, guys. You guys know I'm, I can bring the vibe. I can bring the energy. I can bring the ginger. But deep down, there were months where I struggled so much, guys. There were months where one, one, one of the times Carrie was there. I just stood in church. I was just standing, looking. Everybody was singing, worshiping. Oh, God, you're amazing. And I'm just there like, another day. Okay. And Carrie was like, are you okay? I'm like, Carrie, if I start talking, I'm just going to start bawling. I'm just going to start crying because I feel like God has forgotten me. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. Okay, so the second lie that I have here is I'm alone and no one can understand my struggles. Nobody can relate to my pain. The person sitting beside me, my fusion leader, the staff, Mikey, Carrie, Sydney, everybody around me, nobody can relate to what I'm going through. And for me, guys, it's even crazy because I feel like I'm older. Everybody here is 22, 21. Most of them are Americans. Can anybody really relate to my struggle? I just feel like I'm alone in Kenyan, in the panhandle. No one gets it. And then, guys, I realized, I started studying the scriptures more and more. And I know a lot of you guys who testify to what I'm saying, that in almost every chapter of the Bible, God reminds us that he's with us. One random day, guys, random, random, I, I, I stumbled upon Haggai. How many people have read Haggai in this room? Not that many. It was just a random, random day. And then it was Haggai 1 verses 13. I don't have it on the PowerPoint slides. And then he still says, I'm with you. And I'm like, ah, God, even in Haggai, you're reminding me? Okay. 
In Joshua, he tells, don't be afraid, don't be discouraged. I'm with you. I'm by your side. In the depths of, of the waters, when you pass through the waters, I'm with you. We have that song. And I go through the waters. Hey, I own a biscuit. Hey, my God. Okay. So <laughs> when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be born. The flames will not set you ablaze. Why? Because I'm with you. I'm on your case. I'm standing beside you. I'm not moving. I'm steady. I'm steady on your matter. So I just want to remind you guys tonight that you're not alone. God understands your struggles. He understands the trials that you are facing. And he has blessed you with people around you, your fusion team, the staff, your friends, to remind you that chill, baby girl. Chill, bro. I'm with you. I'm on your side. And I've blessed you with all those people that can help you. Okay. Okay, so I'm coming to my favorite one. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe this case or this request that I have to, for God is too big or too small for him. I don't want to disturb God with my matter. It's too small. Or huh, how I like to do it. I'm like, okay, God, I need a job. But Father, if you consider the, the economic factors, Lord, the political factors, if you look at the socioeconomic factors, I don't think this will work out for me. But I'm laying it at the altar, and then I'm telling him, oh, God, I don't think you can do it, though. And then one day, I'd, I'd done that over and over and over and over again, guys. And then one faithful day, he was like, okay, Tulu, you're talking to me about socioeconomic factors? And I'm like, yes, but, but God, if you look at it critically, if you analyze it from this corner, and he's like, really? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, God, but if you just, and he's like, girl, do you know who I am? guys I was silent and I'm never silent when I pray never 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 he's like Tulu do you remember who I am and I'm asking you guys do you remember who God is do you know who you serve hey he's the king of kings the lord of lords the alpha and omega the beginning and the end the one who was in the olden days in the bible times in the old testament the one who is and the one who is to come Hey, he is too good. He's too kind. He's the creator of the universe. The one that made all the planets. The one that made you specifically. He knows the hair on your head. I don't even know the hair. All the braids on my hair. I can't even count it. But he knows it. He sees everything. And he's the God that you are serving. So what is too big for him? What is socioeconomic factors to your God? What is inflation and political instability to the king of kings? Nothing is too small. Nothing is too big for him. And tonight, guys, and for the rest of your life, for the rest of this semester, I want you to remember the kind of God that you serve. He's on your case. He's your God. He's your champion. He's your father. He's your help. He's your strength. Hey. And that's the kind of God that loves you. I just want you to remember tonight. So when you start giving God and start analyzing for him, just remember the kind of God that you serve. Okay. I'm scrolling through my pages. Okay. Okay. okay, so number four. Oh, this one is, uh, I don't even know if I should say it. I should say it. Oh, yeah. oh. Um, this lie, I'm a total failure. Uh, you know, I don't have the job or the girlfriend or the boyfriend. Let's add that too. I'm not getting 100 over 100 in my class, so I'm a total loser. And those slides just keep hammering over and over and over again. For me, I was looking at all my friends in Chicago, in New York City, and the Wall Street, living their best lives, and I'm like, I must be a loser. Yeah, that's who I am. And I started to believe that lie about myself, that that was the truth. Because I had reiterated it in my mind over and over and over again. Now, I'm not going to ask you guys to come out one by one and tell me what you, the negative things that you have about yourself. But I know that some of us struggle with that tonight. And I just want you to remember, Mikey was talking about this last time, that you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God's special position, possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into this wonderful night. You are not a loser or a failure just because 
you haven't gotten that thing, $1 million, or for me, the big girl job on Wall Street. You're not a loser. You're a winner. You're a champion. You serve a God that has never failed, so you will never fail. Just because it hasn't happened today doesn't mean that he isn't, he isn't going to happen. Let me tell you guys a story about my friend Emmanuel. Emmanuel, fresh guy. Fine boy. <laughs> fine, fresh, fresh and fine. We work together. <laughs> That's just the truth, okay? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> we work together in Nigeria, and then he moved to Canada in 2018. I moved here in 2017, he moved in 2018. And then he did the same thing that I did, studied, followed the law, and then filed for his immigration paperwork. And six months passed. He didn't hear nothing from immigration. But he had a good job, though, and he had his car. Yeah, I think he had a BMW. Fresh. That's what I said. Fresh. Okay. <laughs> um... Six months passed, and then he started helping his other friends do their paperwork, guys. And then all of his friends, their paperwork was getting done. They were getting their permanent residence. They were moving on to the big stage. And my guy, Emmanuel, was still waiting. And he's like, no, but I have my good job, though, and I have my BMW. And then one day, he lost his job. Yeah, that's what I said, Emma. Oh, and he was like, okay, boy, I can still use my car for DoorDash, though. It's fine. And then one day, his car got into an accident. <sighs> and then, yeah. <laughs> and then he told me to, I just feel like a loser and a failure. And like God just left me. And I'm like, no, that's not the case. And I tried to, you know, rile him up and tell him all these things. And he just lost hope, guys. <sighs> and then one day I was in the office. It was a Wednesday. It's a random day in the week. <sighs> Wednesday. And I just saw a call from him. He never calls me on the weekday. He calls me on the weekend. And Nigerians, we can be so dramatic, guys. <sighs> if I call you and I'm like, Emma, Emma, hey, I'm riling you up for something. And I just, I picked the call and I'm like, hello. And he's like, Tolu, do you know who you're talking to? I'm like, yeah, Emmanuel. Like, I have your caller ID. Like, <laughs> why are you calling me on a Wednesday, bro, Wednesday morning? And he's like, Told you, told you. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. He's like, guess who just became a Canadian permanent resident? And I'm like, um, excuse me, ma'am, I'll be back. I told my boss. And I just left my office jumping and rolling around in front of the dining hall. It was crazy. People were looking at me crazy. But, uh, okay. And he was like, Tulu, so I just went to the laundromat to do my laundry. And I was just playing music. And I just got an email. And I saw that I got my paperwork done. So he called his parents, you know, hey, parents, hey. And then parents were crying and laughing. And then he got another email as he was talking to them that he got a job. And this job is not just all this, like, normal jobs. This one comes with benefits. Uh, I mean the 401k. I mean health insurance. I mean dental. And then, as he was still talking to his parents, he got another job offer. Like, still on the same phone call. And his mom just, you know, moms, she was just bawling, bawling and bawling. And I, too, I just started crying, guys. And then he told me, Tolu, this is a testament of God's goodness and his grace. This is not something that any man could have done. This is God. And I'm like... Yeah, this is God. He has a way. He has a way of doing his things because when he shows up, he shows up for real. And everybody, every single person around you, they will know that God is a good God. Am I right? Thank you. So one day, guys, after the story I told you about myself and how I felt like a total loser and failure and just pff, somebody that sucks, really, for the most part, um, I was just sleep, lying down on my bed one day, mindlessly scrolling through my phone, playing games. And then God just came and told me, he told me, to look, do you know what would have happened if you got your dream girl job, big girl job in 2019? I'm like, yeah, I know. I would have blown, I'll be rich, I'll be successful, I'll have all these nice clothes. And he's like, girl, 
if that happened to you, you would have become somebody that was a shallow Christian with no substance. And I'm like, me? <laughs> shallow with no substance? And he's like, yes. Because if that happened to you when you wanted it to happen, you would have felt that it was all about you. It was what you had. It's just you. You say, oh, thank you, God. But deep down, we all know what you would have taught. That God, I'm just so smart. Thank you for the grace to be super smart, though. But it's all on me. You didn't do anything. And I'm like, okay, thank you, God, for that testimony. Because I needed to hear that. That I'm not wasting my time. That I'm not just here in Canyon as a loser. Every day that I'm here, my life is changing. And I want to tell you guys too, for whatever you're waiting on God for, I don't know, but he knows. Your mom may not even know, your best friend may not know, but God knows. And even though you're waiting one month, two months, one year, two years, three years, four years, he's working on things, he's pruning, he's adjusting. He's making you what he wants you to be. So that when you step into that light, you're standing strong. You're standing giddy, but nothing can move you. Nothing can shake you. So, last one, last lie. Last lie, last lie, last lie. Scrolling through my pages. <sighs> God does not love me anymore. Ah, that one, that one entered my soul. God doesn't love me. That's why he hasn't answered my prayers. Okay. But I just want to remind us tonight that he loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us. And whenever I talk about this, I'm like, he could have just picked only the Israelites, right? That would have still been awesome. But he died for all of us, everybody in this room, everybody outside this room. He sent that son to die for us. How would we say he doesn't love us anymore? He's the God that happily rejoices over us. I'm like, so God, you stood up. You saw me and you're turning around for me. I was telling my kid the other day, even my dad doesn't, he just be like, hey girl. How are you? My dad doesn't turn around and rejoice over me, but God is turning around, happily rejoicing over you. He loves you too much. Last week, Mikey, was, Mikey shared this verse, Romans 8, verses 7 to 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels or demons. <laughs> In Nigeria, we always say, neither principalities and powers, wherever they may be, east, west, north, and south, nothing, nothing, guys, can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. I just want to remind you tonight, just because we haven't gotten that answered prayer, that doesn't mean God doesn't love you. He loves you too much. Too, too much, guys. It's so mind-blowing sometimes when I think about it. And that love, that blood of Jesus is still availing so much for us even till today. It's not expired, guys. It's not like, okay, Amy was a good girl today, so the blood covers her. But tomorrow, if she's mean to somebody, that means the blood doesn't cover her anymore. No, it's there for forever. If she's mean to Kelsey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm scrolling. I wish I had a bit to just keep going. Scrolling. Mm. Thank you. So the next thing is to lose. So we know the lies that can attack us or attack God's identity while we wait. My next thing is so why are we waiting? And I've spoken about it here and there. But I just want to go a little bit into it tonight. The first one is to show fully and truly the glory of God. Like I was sharing about my friend Emmanuel. Emmanuel cannot say, oh, it was because I was fresh and fine. Or it was because of my BMW that I got all those things that I got in one, in one day, in a few hours. Everybody, everybody can testify that that's truly the glory of God. If we look at the scripture, if we go through the scripture and we look at miracles and testimonies, everybody there, they will say, oh, the people around were amazed and they knew that it was God's grace. So sometimes we're waiting so that, like I was saying earlier, when it shows, everybody will testify that it's God. It's not you, it's not any standard, it's not any political factor here and there. It's truly, truly God. The next thing, maybe so that he can 
grow uh, so that you can grow and flourish in your Christian journey. And scripture tells us that not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. And perseverance produces character, deep character, character that comes from your stomach, not just from your chest, deep within your heart. And that character produces hope, and that hope will not put you to shame because God's love has been poured into your heart in that waiting Ooh, you would know deep down that even though I'm waiting, God still loves me. God still cares. And, uh, okay, I found my spot. Okay. Put into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us also so that we can be strong and well prepared for the next trial that we may face. Because this Christian journey, it's sweet. It's very, very sweet. But we'll also go through trials. Am I right? And this trial is giving you the muscles. I know Will will have more to say about like building muscles and growing biceps. I don't really know. I just do home workouts, so I don't really know. Um, but all those trials, all, everything that God is doing is preparing you for the next journey, the next phase of your life so that you become, so that you're always going to be a conqueror, a winner in his power. Number three, and this one uh, Kayla was talking to me about it during the sermon prep. She said, so that God can work some things in you. In that waiting period, like I was saying earlier, God is doing some adjusting, some work. Sometimes it's very, very painful because in John 15 from verse 1 to 2, Scripture says Jesus is the true vine and we are the branches. And if those branches, they are not producing fruits, it's going to break them and remove them, send them out. And those, that break is going to be really, really painful. But he's doing all those things, not for just for fun, to make you hurt, to make you suffer, but just so that you're growing. He's working things in your spirit and in your soul. Number four is so that you can put your total trust in him and not rely on yourself. Rely on your abilities, like I was saying. Okay, because I have a master's from the U.S., I must work in Wall Street. I must, That's, it's, it's A plus B must equal to C. And I was putting all my trust in myself. Even though superficially I was saying, thank you, God. Deep down, I, I was thinking, it's all about me. Um, last time when we were talking about, Mikey was talking about scriptures, he said that the pool, the beside that pool, everybody was waiting for the pool to get stirred so that they can be the first person to dip their legs or dip their body into it. But in that waiting period, God would remove all those external factors that you have so that you can put your total trust, put your eyes on him because he's all that matters. Proverbs 3 from verse 5 to 6 for people like me, that sometimes place their trust on themselves, tells us that trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Like I said, we already know all of this, but today is just a reminder for us to trust in God. And also 1 Corinthians 1 from verse 19 to 12. 20 tells us that I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Has God not made foolish the wisdom of the world? And then lastly, on why do we wait? The last one I have here is so that you can become a beacon of strength and encouragement for people around you. Because you've gone through that waiting period. When you see somebody else, your friend, your sister, a new person that came for two posts of fusion, you can encourage them and remind them and tell them of how God has moved in your life. And your story might be something that encourages... Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> your story may be one that just gives them that. I was saying earlier, in Nigeria, we say that ginger to stand up again. Is that me? Is that me? <laughs> <laughs> that ginger to stand up again and place their renewed hope in him. Like I said, we all go through scriptures, but imagine if I'm here crying and Nayeli pulls me aside and says, Tolu, this is how God moved in me. He's coming for you. Ah, guys, I'll, I'll be like, okay, okay. He did it for Nayeli, okay. He'll do it for me, okay. I'm, I'm good. It's not, okay, we have people in the Bible that he did it for, but he did it for Will. And I saw him move in Will's life. He's coming. 
Let me chill. God is coming for me. He did it for Carrie, so he would do it for me. And that would give you sometimes that motivation, that inspiration to go again. Okay, so the last section. Um, okay, so what to do while we wait? What do we do? So we've learned tonight the lies that the enemy could use to attack us and attack God's identity. We've learned why we wait. And then finally, what do we do while we wait? The first thing I have here is to ask God and to trust him. Even though you asked God yesterday, I was telling Mikey, even if you asked God yesterday, if it's still in your mind, I tell my friends sometimes, oh, I feel like there's some junk in my chest. Like, I feel like I'm a recycle bin right now. If you have that feeling like, oh, I still have some doubts. I asked God yesterday. I went to the prayer room and I prayed. But there's still some things in your mind, some doubts, some things that you're not letting go. Ask God again. Lay it at his feet again. God, I didn't finish yesterday. I gave you 80%. It's remaining 20%. This is the 20%. And that's, that may be just for that day. Tomorrow, if you're back again to 60%, guess what? Ask God again and trust him. Scripture tells us to ask, ask, ask. Because, oh, I just lost my train of thought. It just went out the door. Okay. <sighs> Okay, I think I'm back. <laughs> God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask, think, or even imagine. And I'm like, even in my imagination, it's okay, God, thank you. <laughs> thank you, God. So I really want to encourage you tonight. I know you have prayed for it yesterday. I know you probably prayed for it before two posts. But I, I want to encourage you again. Ask God. And trust it to him. Ryan taught us something during the last retreat. He said, sometimes all you just need to do is open your arms and say, God, take it all. Take this burden off my back. I was telling John the other day that for two or three years, I felt like I've carried a 20 LB dumbbell on my back. I did not sleep well. I wasn't eating well because I would give God 70% of my requests and be like... You can't handle it, God. Oh, it's too small. I don't want to bother you. And finally, guys, recently I felt like that dumbbell was lifted off my back. And it feels good. I feel like I can do some squat jumps right here. <laughs> but with the 20 LB dumbbell was weighing me down. I felt like I couldn't move. And I just want you tonight and for going forward, going forward, to ask God and give him the 100% and trust that he's able, he's capable to take care of it. Secondly, I want you to praise God even as you're waiting. Don't just be like, and I've asked God and I'm just going to like suck at the back and wait. And then when he finally does it, then I'll praise. Even in the waiting, guys, I want you to praise God. As I was getting ready for tonight, I remembered this story of, and I mean, spoil the name. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. Thank you. Thank you. Um, they, were, they were fighting one of the ites. I'm not sure if it's the Ammonite or the mob. One of the ites. Okay, guys. There's so many Hittites, but I, I don't know. And they prayed, and God said, um, guys, put your praise team in front of the battle. And I saw it, I'm like, sir, these heights are probably like tough, too tough. I should put the praise team guys in front. Are you sure? And God was like, yeah, yeah, put us in front. And everybody come dancing. Yeah. Come moving, come shaking. Yeah. Because I'm going to fight your battle for you. So in that waiting period, in that downtime, when you feel like you haven't blown, you haven't gotten to where you want to be, I want you to praise God with all of your mind, with all of your chest, because he's fighting. And he has, he has already even fought all your battles. It's just that his time is not your time. You may be like, ah, God, can you help me? Can you provide the $1 million in like a day? And he's like, I don't think you're ready for that. <laughs> Let's do some work, buddy. Wait, and praise me in the, in, the, in the waiting. Thirdly, I have your discuss with your friends 
and seek prayers. So a few weeks ago when Will was talking, he showed us the chosen video. And those friends, bless you, bless you. Those friends carried their paralyzed friend and they broke the roof and put that friend down to Jesus. That friend could not have done it on his own, honestly, guys. He was way back there. There's no way. There was no way. But sometimes you need those friends to carry you and pull you to Jesus and say, Jesus, you see, is that me? <laughs> Let me just stand back here. It's not, thank you. You need those friends around you to say, God, this is your girl. She cannot even talk. She's just helpless, crying. Take care of her. I don't want you guys to package for Jesus. I call it packaging. And I'm sure Kathy will understand. She's laughing there. Don't package for Jesus like, hey, God, everything's good. I just pray for school. Don't package for your friends when they ask you, are you okay? You're just not. No, everything is fine. When, whenever I had a mentor a few years ago, I only prayed for school, guys. To be like, Tulu, do you have anything to pray about? I'll be like, yeah, pray for school. And I was going through a lot. Maybe in all those times, I could have told them, guys, look at my struggle. Look at my problems. So I want to encourage you today, guys, share with your friends. You've laid it down at God's temple. You've laid it at God's altar. You've praised God. But there's still some things in your mind. Open up to people around you. Please be vulnerable. Somebody may have a story for you. Somebody may have words of encouragement. Somebody may be able to speak into that situation and drag you, even though you don't want to go sometimes, drag you to the presence of God. And he, God, will finish all the work. Worship team, please can you come back up? And then lastly, guys, when, you're, when you blow... When you finally blow, when you hit that jackpot, I want you to be willing to share your testimonies with people around you. Don't, don't hurt it in. Don't be like, Tulu, but I'm, sh I'm shy. I don't want to talk. Share your testimony because your testimony, like I said, may inspire somebody, may help somebody, may be what somebody needs that day to keep moving forward. So tonight, as the worship team plays, I just want you to sit down there for a few minutes and think about it. What, what are you asking God for that you haven't seen yet? Think about it. And tonight, I just want you to lay it at God's altar. Lay it at his feet. Drop it. Drop everything 100%. Cancel all those lies, all those doubts. And just drop it down at God's feet. We're going to have the, the prayer team around the room. I'm going to be here. Will, Ryan, they're going to also be here. So please, I just encourage you today, as you are waiting and you are hoping and you are trusting in God, to ask him over and over, to praise him, to share with people around you, to discuss with them, to tell them, this is, this is my struggle, this is what I'm struggling with. And lastly, to share your testimonies with other people around you. Let us pray.